Good day, this is Joe, and hey, I'm at the historic Albuquerque Press Club, and uh, we're having our monthly Albuquerque Typewriter Society meeting here. I also understand that uh, someone's birthday is today. Hmm, who could that be, I wonder? So I'm a little early, I'm always early. Nice warm summer day. Uh, we had Kind of a cloudy week, a lot of uh, moisture, the uh, typical, what we call the monsoons, the moisture coming up from Mexico in the summer makes cloudy afternoons and uh, possibility of rainstorms rolling through, which is really nice. Beautiful day, and here at Elm Park, high atop the hill at the Albuquerque Press Club, I brought, what did I bring, three typewriters? The Facet 1620, I brought the Smith Corona Silent Super, and I brought my Olympia SF. Oh, my wife's uh, Olympia SM3. So four typewriters total, and uh, hopefully we'll have a good turnout. Okay, folks, here we are at the um, August 11th, 2019 Typewriter Club meeting. Yeah. We're here with all the usual characters. In fact, we have a lot of we ha we have a lot of characters here. In fact. <laughs> There's probably at least 26 on, on every one of these machines, but still, I'm, I digress. My name is Bill, Bill Teft. I like typewriters. I like typing on typewriters. This is one of my favorite typewriters to type on because it is so smooth. In fact, for a 63-year-old machine, it's pretty damn smooth. It's a whole lot smoother than I'm going to be when I'm 63. <laughs> All right, so what we have here is a 1956 Smith Corona Silent Super. The, uh, the, the typewriter uh, mavens, they call this a f the famous Smith Corona 5T portable series. They made a whole series of them. Here we have a, uh, a reproduction of the original manual and some pictures of the uh, various units, including uh, an electric. Sturdy fiberglass case. This machine was meant to go anywhere. When I was living in California, I was uh, I was at home and I th I was wanting a good Smith Corona silent super portable typewriter. I was just literally sitting at home wanting one of these. I got into the car, went over to the thrift store, looked around and I I'll be damned. This was sitting there. This in the ca in this beautiful case. This beautiful machine absolute in this in the exact same condition you see it in nothing nothing I've done nothing to it except maybe put a piece of paper into it and a ribbon five dollars folks five dollars okay <laughs> five smackers five smackers and they were glad glad to take it glad they were glad to take it and let me tell you folks absolutely perfect All right, 12 characters per inch, so you can fit in a lot more nonsense onto the page. A lot of typewriters are 10 characters to the inch, but this one is a is just a cute little 12. What do we call that, Joe? A, a pica? Elite. Elite, elite machine? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Let me give you a quick little tour. It's not really very, it's not really very elaborate, not very fancy. We've got the inside clean as a whistle. This is. This is Probably unbelievable. cleaner than a whistle. It's cleaner than any whistle I've ever seen. Made in America. Still, the, the original, look at that, the padding. That's the soundproofing. Okay, interesting story. Now, normally, this area, when it fits into the, the case, it gets all scarred up. You can see a little bit of dirt, but it's an absolutely beautiful condition. Santa Barbara, California. Santa Barbara, look how, look how meticulous meticulous that is. What an incredible machine. Wow. And of course, how many of these 5Ts do you think they made in all the different sure. models? Millions, right? Yeah. Millions. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful machine. If, if I were to recommend a good working portable typewriter, I, I wouldn't hesitate recommending one of these uh, Smith Corona 5T machines from the, from the 50s. They're built very, very well. You can get them for us. You can still get them for a song, let's say. I don't know if you can still get them for five bucks, but they're out there, folks. Apparently, somebody did. I did. <laughs> There's really nothing super fancy about it. They've got uh, tab. It has the tab set. Yep. The uh, the 
the the silent super um, there was also the silent yeah. and the the silent super added a um, a one key get that folks a one and a, and a and an exclamation point that was one of its that was one of the big selling points the other one was a uh, um, the tab set and clear levers over here that's what that's what bumped things up from the the the, the silent to the silent super all right and I think the in the in the day in 1956 I think this machine was what sixty dollars. Sixty-five, sixty dollars, and I think the, uh, the 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 original silent that was probably about uh, fifty-five. I mean, the difference the difference in price wasn't a whole lot by our standards, but if you were a reporter on you know or, a, or you know kind of some kind of stringer or you were just a, co a college kid, that five dollar dif ten dollar difference that meant a lot. Okay, so a lot there are a lot of uh, silents out there, and a lot of silent supers. I can't believe the condition. Okay, I'm about to wrap this up. Okay, one last story. <laughs> For a while I drove a cab in Santa Barbara, California. Great gig. I drove a cab for quite a while and I was, and I was uh, one night a guy got in and we started talking and he, he said that years ago, this was years, this was, this, this happened years ago, so what I'm telling you happened even further back than that. And he told me his name was Ayala, and he had a business machine shop. And I said, "Oh my God, I can't believe it." Oh wow! This he said, "He said, I said, I have a typewriter that's got your sticker on it from 1956." And he said, "Yeah, my dad probably sold that. My dad sold that machine for sure, and kept and kept it going." And I said, "Well, it was great to. It's great to keep the old yeah. gear running." Wow. Great, thank you, Bill. Thank you, Joe. Okay, this is a typewriter that I just finished cleaning that uh, for our uh, new member in the Typewriter Society, uh, Tara. And um, she had brought last meeting, a month ago, a Remington Quiet Rider uh, that she had purchased and it needed to be cleaning and serviced and she was at, in a dilemma about what to do with it. Well, it turns out that typewriter really was a parts machine. It was missing some key tops, it was missing the uh, Remington spool covers, which doesn't sound like much, but the key tops make a big deal. Okay. <laughs> and so what I did to help her out, we worked out a uh, compensation type of a deal, is that I picked up a Remington Quiet Rider, which are readily available, which is nice, and they are extremely robust typewriters, so they don't break. So this one came from Goodwill and is a, re, uh, a replacement for what she had. And then, but it needed cleaning, like almost every typewriter you buy from Goodwill or eBay. And this was the first typewriter that I have cleaned that I can honestly say was smoke-stained. Wow. When, you, when I washed it, and on Remington's they do very well where you use a citrus cleaner on them, I do it in the bathtub, wash it all down, and it literally came off not just in oil and gunk and stuff like that, but literally yellow brown stain came, came off and also the case was oil stained because I washed the Remington cases on a lot of these you can actually wash them too and clean them all up and make them really nice but a lot of times when people say they're smoke stained typewriters they really aren't it's just that the plastic has yellowed which has nothing to do with smoke but it has everything to do with the uh, plastic uh, yellowing just by age right. and that can be bleached and made white again oh, yeah. but this typewriter so it came out wonderful it's a uh, Probably about as close to new as you're going to get a Remington Choir Rider nice now. Nice dark imprint. Yeah. Nice dark imprint. And that's a regular ribbon, not a silk ribbon. Um, I happen to have some uh, new old stock of actually Remington spooled ribbons ah. that we put on that. And you can see it has the type spools oh, yeah. on it. So it looks really nice. And you put the, has the little insert, which you don't have to have, but it's nice to have a little metal insert in there. Yes, yes. And then it's nice keys. This one happens to be an elite or 12 pitch, 12 characters per inch. And it has the one and the plus sign, which makes it a full keyboard as far as the American. And um, it came out really nice. It's just virtually nothing wrong with that. And that's one thing about if people want a typewriter that they really think that they want to write the novel on, you can't go wrong with the Remington Choir Writer. They're just robust. And if you notice, you know, without having to do any adjustment, um, it's virtually a perfect line. Wow. And so Thank you, makes for a nice typewriter. Nice job. <laughs> How do you like that Hermes rocket? I like it a lot.
Okay, so when I decided to declutter my house, this is a big project, uh, I found this site called freecycle.org. So I went on it and offered some things, and I, so I had this toaster oven that I never use and blah, blah, blah. One of the things was my electric typewriter. And uh, so because I had no place to put it, so I offered it. Tara answered. And she came over from Rio Rancho and she picked it up. And so then we talked and it, it, we got friendly. And then she sent me a letter uh, th thanking me for the typewriter and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and it was one of those envelopes. Well, I got very excited when I saw that. And I said, oh, I can do that. So I, <laughs> I cut up an, a calendar uh, page as well. And I wrote her back and then We've been writing. Do you have an example since. of one of her envelopes to show the people? Actually, I do. Yes. So this Shitara makes envelopes out of Here's calendar, calendar pages, and, and there's a little one, yeah, of, you know, yeah. for a gifty thing. And she uses spare calendar. Yep. Yeah, very cool. It's gorgeous. What a talent. Yes. And what a joy getting them, I've got to tell you. You know, you see that in the uh, in the in the box and is it I can't remember. <laughs> it's very exciting. Yeah. Well, tell us about your typewriter. I have one. Well, this Corona is a 1935 Corona 4, 1935 typewriter that a friend of mine had. She's in her 80s and she's also getting rid of stuff. But uh, she happened to mention that she had this typewriter of her father's and uh, and I said, and you never told me about it? You know? <laughs> and she said, well, you're trying to get rid of things and I didn't think you'd want it. I said, well, I'm, I'm going to make an exception for a typewriter. <laughs> so, Anyhow, she she showed it to me, and I, uh, her aunt had it for a long time, and her aunt covered oh, this yeah. typewriter box with that <laughs> contact paper. <laughs> How good is that? Well, she had it, so uh, so I brought it to a typewriter meeting, and Joe looked at it and said, "Oh, I've got one just like that," and so he took it home to to get it up to snuff so that I can actually use it. And what I like about it is that I can use card stock and I got a lot of cards at home oh, nice. that I can, you know, use in this typewriter. And I, I couldn't do it on the other one, but it doesn't matter because I'll write on anything. <laughs> Very good, thank you. So this is the same yeah. Smith Corona Silent Super. It's a basket shift, yeah. okay. They did this because it was Lighter. In fact, some people call it floating shift. Floating I think shift. later on, yeah. the Smith Corona called it floating shift. Yeah. As, as most people know, the type bars have two, and some, some typewriters even have three yeah. uh, characters on them. Yeah. And one is uppercase and one is lowercase. Yeah. When you press the shift key, it changes whether you, this is uppercase and this is lowercase. And all that, all it does is it moves the basket just enough to make it. Uh, uppercase or lowercase. So here, for example, we'll have a, an uppercase T and then a lowercase T. Yep. Now, that one's not too obvious. There's an A and there's an A. So the, the cap is the cap is lower than the upper than the lowercase. All right. So on these Model 5 T's, we have a, a two two different little adjustments here. One here. This is for the uppercase. And you can watch. We'll press the shift key, and you'll watch this 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 arm here will come and that and it bottoms out on that and it and it hits that screw this this screw on the bottom and then this one down here and you can get a little shot that limits how far up it can go so there's a range okay and these little screws you loosen the nut you adjust the screw very very slightly I mean just as little as you possibly can. Tighten the nut down yep. because, sure as hell, that if you don't tighten that nut down, that screw's going to come loose, and then you're, then you're screwed. Then you're screwed. Very and good. the secret with all typewriter repairs is have a have a have a piece of delicious flying star flying star apple uh, cherry pie. A cherry pie with you. Yes. And an adult beverage. Of course. But the cardinal rule of, of any maintenance and repair on a typewriter is. Make a small adjustment, check it. Make a small adjustment, check it. Go back and forth and back and forth. Don't make 
big adjustments. It's just yeah. make us make a small adjustment. Very good. Signing off. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Well, all in all, we had a great time uh, yesterday at the uh, Albuquerque Press Club with our monthly meeting of the Albuquerque Typewriter Society. I want to especially thank Kevin Kittle for all his work that he did. It wasn't very recreational for him. He had this project of making name tags for all of the members, and so he had uh, pre-typed up the Albuquerque Typewriter Society logo, the typewritten logo, and then he brought a typewriter with a 6.6 character per inch font typeface and uh, was typing the names with that. So he had some work to do during the meeting and I appreciate all that dedication that he had. Uh, you know, also, I thank uh, Kevin for the interview that he gave us about the Remington Quiet Writer. And of course, um, I want to also thank Bill Taft for his uh, very uh, lively and humorous interviews. Uh, he's a great, a great person to listen to. He's a great speaker. And one of our other members, William, uh, came a little late to the meeting in his Vespa, and we happened to have been tinkering around with an IBM wheel writer that one of the people brought, and the um, metal rod guides at the um, print mechanism slides back and forth on was really grungy and we didn't really bring any solvents or any any really adequate cleaning supplies and so this is what you do at a typewriter meeting when you're a little bit unprepared is you you get your friend that has the two-stroke Vespa you give him a paper towel and he goes out to the Vespa and dips the paper towel in the uh, gasoline slash two-stroke oil mixture which we <laughs> we used to uh, yeah clean those uh, those guide rods for the uh, print mechanism on the wheel rider actually it did end up ungunking it and, and that part of the wheel rider started working but it also had a problem with the uh, mechanism that drives the print wheel and intermittently hanging up. So we advised that person to get some professional service on the wheel rider, which is a great typewriter, by the way. So that leads to the point that we have noticed, uh, Bill, Kevin, and myself, we noticed that at these monthly meetings, we end up doing a lot of servicing, like ad hoc, impromptu, tinkering, because people bring typewriters every month, and hey, I got a new typewriter, and I don't know what's going on with it. And so, I think uh, next month I'm going to try to get into the habit of actually bringing tools, uh, bring my tool bag and maybe some simple degreasing and cleaning stuff along with it so we can at least be prepared enough to look at some of these issues and figure out is it an easy fix, is it something that needs more service and all that. So that is a good segue to the fact that one of the members brought an Underwood, full-size standard Underwood typewriter. I haven't dated it, but I think it's roughly World War II era. Very, very dirty, but it's on my workbench right now, and I'm in the process of starting to service. It's gonna need a lot of cleaning, degreasing. I worked on it a little bit yesterday evening after the meeting uh, and was able to get the ribbon drive working a little bit better and the uh, carriage bearing rails uh, and bearings uh, working good. So it actually types, it types pretty good just needs a lot of cleaning so that'll be a fun project. So we have a new member to our society, Tara, and she is a very crafty person and she did an impromptu workshop for us yesterday involving how she crafts homemade envelopes out of artwork called from things like uh, used calendars and she has a number of different templates that she she's designed that enable her to uh, cut out these uh, templates out of artwork and then fold them into envelopes that you can use for letter letters and greeting cards and whatnot. And it's a great idea. Uh, she also supplied us with a whole stack of used calendars that we can do our own calendar art based envelopes uh, with. It was a fun workshop. And you know, if you're a typist and if you uh, are in a uh, letter writing project or if you just in general do a lot of letter writing as a habit, it's a great idea to make Make your own envelopes to put your letters in and the people really appreciate that so we like these kind of crafty projects that sort of dovetail typing and writing with typewriters into other kinds of uh, associated crafts uh, thank you Tara for that uh, workshop that was great
it was my birthday yesterday, and uh, it was a great surprise party that they had for me during the meeting, uh, including some great cherry pie from the Flying Star Cafe. I really want to thank all the people that participated in that party, especially the Kittles and my wife. It was also another uh, member's birthday, our member uh, Robin. It was her birthday as well, and so happy birthday to Robin. So it was fun combining the typewriter meeting with a birthday party at the Albuquerque Press Club. And I also want to thank the Albuquerque Press Club for hosting us. And uh, if you guys are interested in any way in starting your own typewriter-oriented group in your local community, I would advise you to seriously think about it. It's a fun thing to do to build community around these lovely machines. And as always, I encourage you to stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.